Hi, I'm Trent Goodmanson. I'm here in my studio um, with my two little daughters who are drawing with my pastels. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I wanted to show you, uh, I've been doing some very, very small oil paintings. Um, this came about partially because I wanted to paint over some old paintings. That's what you see here. It's the remainder of an old painting, a very large painting, so I won't recognize anything there in that little one. But uh, also, um, this experiment came about because I was just kind of feeling, oh, just, I don't know, like I couldn't quite get into a big painting yet. Didn't feel like it, but I wanted to paint, or I wanted to, I wanted to want to paint, I think is more accurate. And um, I felt like doing a whole bunch of little paintings very, very quickly was going to satisfy my need to get a, a completed painting but also to not take up my whole afternoon and you know I very quickly have the um, have the benefit of having a finished painting behind me um, so uh, well here I can show you a couple examples of them you may have seen these before anyway um, so I'm gonna do one of them for you right now and it's going to be of this scene that uh, just an afternoon scene um, a December farm and mountain scene um, so this is a six by four inch thing. It's a piece of masonite, three eighths inch. It's been primed and it's also been oil painted. So who knows what kind of texture is really under here. But I actually was going to do it this way. In fact, I did. <laughs> and uh, after I was completely done, uh, my youngest daughter, my two year old Emmy, uh, decided that she would uh, have some fun with my oil paint. So that's that. <laughs> I might as well just leave it and let it dry and reframe it. Anyway, I was going to redo that, um, but then I saw some very similar colors here. Isn't that interesting? That when I turned it sideways, it almost looks like an abstracted version of this exact scene, and uh, very quickly, just a matter of, you know, just a 20 second sketch or whatever, I just kind of placed the farm or the uh, the barn and the, the different groupings of trees in here just to see how it would how it would look. And I, I really like this abstract shape. Um, I like that becoming, I like the idea of that becoming that mountain and that seems to correspond to the sky. And I'll, I'll see how I change things up a little bit. Um, see where it goes. But um, So that's the plan. All right. This will not be very long. What I've got here is, this is actually a relatively cheap brush that I've had for probably over a decade. And it's just a, I can't even read what size it is, or uh, maybe I can, uh, it looks like a Princeton. It doesn't matter what brand it is. You know, it really doesn't matter. I measured it, it's half inch wide at the, at the base here and it's three quarters inch long. Who knows, that might have been a little bit longer when I started out, but that is what I'm working with. Also, my little temporary small scene setup, and I actually really enjoy doing these outdoors, so it's, you know, of course, just on my easel. But I've got a little lantern battery here. It's, I only use that because it's heavy, <clears throat> and I've set it up here next to my computer. Um, and, I actually had to put a paper towel down here just to prevent this from slipping. So it's under the, the battery, my weight, and under the, the board. So, okay, now that we've got all that out of the way, here I go. Okay, so I've also set up my, my palette um, vertically on my easel here just because it's convenient. It's really close by. Okay, I'm gonna start with the barn. Mostly because it's the the most different element in the scene. I'm just mixing up a light blue here. And this whole scene is bathed in this golden afternoon light. So every color is going to have some version or some amount of, of that yellow in it, that gold. And <laughs> it amazes me how close this underpainting is already, my gosh, I could almost call it quits. I'm going to do the sky and just some of the major elements down here and see see how much I can get away with. But I do like that the 
that the barn has that traditional barn roof with different, you know, it's a gabled roof. I think that's what it's called. Oops. A little bit too much. I'm trying to go really thick here. Mansard roof, that's what I meant. Um, trying to go really thick, but it has its limits as well. You know, I've got to keep it in control. So the side of the barn is just going to be a little bit lighter. So you can see here, I did the the big barn shape, the, the roof, which was that light blue, and then this line, which is a little bit lighter. And then finally I'm going to do the side down there. And essentially this is a barn in three brush strokes. One, two, three. And um, goodness, if I could, if I could keep it that simple, then that would be a more powerful painting than if I were to to try to to add more to it. For the trees, it's a little dark, but it's going to be kind of not only impressionistic, but um, you know, I'm not trying to be accurate with the colors. It's not even about that. It's about the feeling of it, certainly. But uh, those trees could almost be, you know, if they were a different, different breed of trees, different variety, then their local color might be different, and therefore it would, it would change. And uh, you know, it doesn't matter to me what variety of trees those are especially at this distance. It just matters that they function as a grouping and serve to to benefit the whole the whole scene. So it matters that there's a a barn there slightly off center. There's a dark grouping here, a slightly different color, different you know, a little bit lighter grouping there. I'm going to treat them a little bit different as far as edge quality as well. You know, they're also different shapes. So there's variety there, but very simplified. Okay, now I'm going to uh, just you know, fix that part and turn that into the sky. And for that I'm going to wash the brush. Alright, so just starting with just white and ultramarine blue, just to get a good base color. Yeah, I might as well try it out. Whoops. Yeah, that does happen. <laughs> Whoops. And look at that. I'll have to deal with that in a minute. And that's one nice thing about small paintings. This isn't going to work. I'm going to have to do it down here. I had set that up for, for a horizontal scene. and It doesn't quite work when it's vertical. Okay, I'm going to compare that to, to the hierarchy of, of lights and darks. It appears to me that this is going to be the lightest um, large shape. Granted, the snow is is lighter than that. Maybe a few spots down there are lighter. But as far as large shapes, meaning like there's a shape, the sky, and there's a shape, the mountain, those hills, and this foreground. And then these are very minor shapes within that. So as far as large shapes are concerned, it that sky is the lightest one. And add some some viridian hue. This green, which I, I more often treat as a as a blue than anything. So this viridian seems to be more the color that that I want. That that ultramarine was a little bit too purple for this scene. Well, you know what? I kind of liked kind of like a darker color. I'll live with that for a little bit, see how I like it, and I can always change it later. Okay, since I messed up down there, 
I might as well fix that now. So I'm going to go for kind of that, you know, it's kind of greenish, but, but it's more on the golden brown tone uh, side of things. My intent right now is just to cover, cover the canvas as quickly as possible with the right tones. Just thinking about that. Looks a little too green for me. Oh, that's a, that's a cool one. Okay. She was asking me to sharpen it. <laughs> Roll it. Roll <laughs> it. I did. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with more of a just a brown. Yeah. So burnt sienna, yellow, and white. So comparatively, this color that I just mixed up is quite a bit more brown than the other, the one that was previously there. But I'm gonna. Do something that's a little bit in between the two, just more yellow. And I'm gonna let those other colors stay there. It'll help I'll give it give it depth. I'll just drag that across there. <laughs> Cute kids. And let's see. I'll bring that up there. I want that to be more brown. And here's something I noticed with these colors in the winter time and um, aut late autumn, early spring I guess too. Um, there's black in, in these colors and it serves as a really nice um, moderator I guess. The black will tone those down so I use black, white, yellow, and brown um, in differing combinations to get these these nice you know, golden colors that you get in the in the grasses and leaves in uh, in wintertime. So you can see what I'm trying to do there. I'm not worrying about the the little nuances, the little shapes and shadows here, which are awesome, and really are very cool. But now is not the time to to think about them. Just want to do the the big shapes. You know, pretend this whole scene is made up of just big chunks of construction paper, you know. If you had your choice of any color construction paper in the world, but you wanted to do as few cuts as possible, you know, this is kind of the way you might treat it. You know, make it into a bunch of big, big shapes so you don't have to cut it up too much. Okay, now... I'm dealing with a little bit of those nuances. Oh, kind of pretty. So I'm just taking cues from this. I'm not trying to be totally 100% accurate. It doesn't. I'm, that's not my intention. If I was wanting perfect accuracy, I'd just, you know, sell this as a photo. But uh, that's not my intention with this. So I'm just giving an impression of it. I'm trying to. Um, convey the feeling. So now I'm going to put in the uh, those darker mountains up there. Let's see if I can get a color that I like. I'm going to start with blue. And add a little bit of this dioxazine purple. And since most of this is in, well, I don't know. I'm going to either go with the light color and add the dark, the shadow color, or I'm going to go with the shadow color and then add the lights. I think at this stage is going to be, well, I'll just make an executive decision. I'll just make, and I'm experiencing those same problems. So I'm going to put it down here again. 
just going to fill it in. So I'm not necessarily painting the lights or the darks right now, I'm just painting the shape. Approximating the, the values. What I also want to think about is, does the size of this shape and the size of that one and the size of that one, do they all, are they, oh, here, we'll turn it upside down real quick. Sorry, make me see, that made you seasick. But, you know, if you see it for something that it's not, you know, it, it's um, not recognizable anymore. Here, I'm going to turn it again. I turn it sideways. You know, you can start to see patterns and shapes for what they are. Okay, hold on. I'm going to turn it right side up again. <laughs> um, you know, our brains have a tendency to think of, of colors and shapes as objects, even if they're not really recognizable. Um, we're going to try, our brain is going to try to make sense of it all. And particularly if it does look like a barn and a mountain and you know, sky and trees, then our, our brain sort of fixes it in our mind, which prevents us from seeing it as it truly is, which is, you know, got to always consider it an imperfect version of what it will be. And um, the process of painting is trying to perfect it. So, that was a strange, possibly strange um, perception of it, but just trying to balance these colors and create a mood. Uh, or ba balance the shapes and colors and values, you know. Just, I don't want anything to detract from the main, from the feeling of the scene. Soften these for a minute, see if that helps. You know, bring up, bring that shape, make that shape bigger in comparison to that one, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna think about this for a minute. Make it even a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think I like that better. All right, so now I'm gonna go with some pure blues with purples in it. A little bit lighter, add some black so it's not so, so intense. as few brush strokes as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm even tempted to soften that, but I, I think I'll leave it for now. That's a bit dark, but uh, like I said, I'm going to leave it for now, and uh, I'll come back to it later. So I'm going to work on the details of, of the stuff where this uh, barn is. I'm going to go for the easiest shape, which is these um, stacks of, of hay and straw. So I'll show you again. So it's really just just a solid color and then these dark shadow lines. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do all three of those shapes or just just one or two. We'll see. that I did too many brush strokes there. I'm gonna redo that one. Just be one. And that's gonna be, you know, one, one uh, it's gonna be covered up by the frame if I frame it. Uh, that's one of the downsides of painting so small is, you know, a large percentage of this four inches is, is actually covered up by frame. You know, it's only gonna be, you know, from the end of my brush there to about my fingertip there. Um, the other way to to frame it is to you know, choose a frame that's that's too big for it, and leave a, a space. So, in essence, a, a mat type of a type of a feeling. So that's just something to consider when doing doing small paintings. Okay. You 
saw me wipe. That's kind of how I just clean my brush. I just get it off. And that way I can still use the paint for other mixtures. Okay, I've got a brown, a light brown tone. There are some fences there. Some other outbuildings. Just trying to be as simple as possible. I'm going to pick up some of these other colors. These two shapes. I ignored that one for now. But, uh, but I'm going to put it in because I don't like how these are spaced out. I wanted them to function as a group. So I'll just put another brush stroke in there, which is completely invisible. Try that again. Since that's the same color, might as well use it over there for a minute. Okay, I go back down to this purple for my shadows. Add a little bit of brown just to dull it down a little bit. Let's see if this brush is small enough to do the shadows on there. I don't want to reach for a smaller brush if at all possible. Because then I'll have, you know, it's going to be tempting to uh, to get too detailed. <clears throat> so I want to keep keep it a little bit impossible to overdo it. A little darker than that. A little bit more obviously cool too. I'll go with a very dark purple. It's not a perfectly pure purple. It does have some brown in it still. Sorry, it's a little bit hard to zoom in all the way on this because it is so small. Look at my face. I'll go ahead and put the shadow Look at my on the side of the barn. Honey. Okay. Well, when I get back from it, it is starting to read correctly. I noticed that I kind of squished the barn. It's not as long as in my reference photo. <clears throat> it's not a problem unless I decided that it is, and I'm, th I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a difficult part, and for this I'm going to need a little bit of thinner. So with a little bit of thinner, I can get a sharper line, but still not have to go to a, a smaller brush. I'm going to try to chisel that edge. The more I work with it, the less chisels it's going to get. I'm going to try to just work it on both sides. Get a nice edge again. I, tr I tried doing stuff like this with a palette knife. Um, I just don't like how it turns out. This is my personal preference, so I just prefer to do it with this brush. extension of the barn that appears to be in shadow and I think I'm going to go ahead and extend the barn which is why I'm making this bigger than it really needs to be. Okay, I might as well extend that barn right now. We'll see if that color is close. Yeah, it's close. It's not right, but might be closer. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going 
have to redo that. It's all right. I do like it longer though. Okay, actually, I kind of like that it gets a little darker on that side. I'm going to keep that. Just extend the whole barn here. Alright, actually, I quite like that. I'd say it's very close to being done. It doesn't need very much more to, to give it the right feeling. Let me put some shadows in the trees. So browns, purples, mixed it together. There are not a lot of shadows in these trees. They're they're mostly branches, so they're basically see-through. But if I can indicate a dark side and make more of a mass out of them than what they really even are, just kind of emphasize that they have a shadow side and a light side. And it'll read better than, than if I were to just paint it as see-through trees. <laughs> that may not be as recognizable as a as a three-dimensional tree if I don't be careful about that. All right. Well, I'm liking it. I'm deciding right now that I'm going to use a small brush because um, there just really is no way that I can get the the windows in there to be square or remotely square without resorting to a smaller brush. Also, I would want a little bit more, con more control um, if I'm going to do any of these um, things to the roof. Also, some of the, the branches in the tree. So I'm going to use my signature brush for those. But first, Hmm. I'm going to try to add some of this snow, and snowy mountains, especially when they're partially snowy like this, are just, just monstrous <laughs> to handle. They're terrible. Um, I find them very difficult because it's um, easy to overdo them, and it's but if they're underdone, they, they don't work, they don't look right either. Just a sec, I'm going to put a few little... Just indications of a tall grass texture there. Uh, okay, see that's better than those because look, that distance from the edge to there is roughly the same as from there to there, and it just didn't work. So I put that third one in there, and these ones kind of act as a grouping now, and that one. It's it's better to have them off balance. More interesting. Okay, so up to the mountains now. And I'm gonna wash my brush. All right, got a clean brush. Just gonna go for the white, just pure white. But with this golden sunlight on it, oh, white and yellow with no purple. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want that pure of a, of a yellow. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown. Burnt sienna. Okay. Okay, this is a little bit. Oops, my screen went to sleep. A little bit scary because this could certainly ruin the scene. Well, it won't ruin the whole scene. I can fix it, but. I'm going to try scumbling, or not scumbling, I'm just going to drag this across. I'm just paying attention to the very um, most prominent highlights. When I squint at it, it appears to work but I don't want to have have to have a sign in front of the painting saying it looks good if you squint at it <laughs> that would be a bad painting <laughs> so look at it with my eyes fully open 
and it does appear to be a little bit too too stark to me but I'm not finished either with the painting so I'm gonna leave it that way for a minute while I work on making the other parts match so I'm mixing more or less the sky color but a darker version of it and this will be the the shadows of the snow you know the the, the snowy fields that are that are shaded by the mountain so these parts I'm going to continue these shapes down into the the shade I've got lots of paint on my brush and I'm just dragging it just so the very tips of the peaks of those you know those uh, is that the right way to say it? Peaks of paint that are on my brush? Anyway, so the, the tips of the peaks are um, barely touching the, the canvas. And it, the canvas just picks them up and slowly, you know, barely, barely takes them off. Okay, well I like, I like the colors there. I like the feel of it. It still draws a bit of attention to itself up there. I like it individually, but that part is so contrasty uh, compared to that. They appear to be two different styles of painting. So I've either got to add more detail and some sharper lines down here to you know, bring the attention back down here, or I've got to do something to that. So I still have not decided. Let me work on the mountain a little bit more. Part of this mountain is, even though it's a kind of a purple, purple mountain because it's in the distance, it does have a, a light side to it, as you can see. You know, if you look at the general uh, scene, this is very much a purpley, a dark purple shape. But this triangle is more of a brown color, definitely compared to to these. So, so that's what I've got here. And maybe when I put this in, it'll be a little closer to what I want, what I want for that whole scene. We'll see. Hey, yeah? Um, what is this? That is an eraser, sweetie. Can I erase with it? Yep. I gotta but get that's, the plastic off? Yeah, that's just like those other ones that you had, but that one's a brand new one. I think that mountain, oh, I like the top part. Just needs a little bit, a little bit of finesse. Maybe some softer edges to those little bits of dry brush. I don't know what that technique is called. It's, I don't know if it's dry brush or not. You know what though? It does not matter what it's called. <laughs> do the shadow side on the other part. So over here. That's a little too purple. Well, I don't know. I kind of like it. Maybe I'll add a little bit of blue. You know, painting is just responding to the painting itself as much as to your subject. If you're responding only to the subject, then you get a... Uh, photorealist painting eventually. That's not what I'm going for at all. On the other hand, if you respond only to the painting itself and not to your subject, to your reference, then you're going to get an abstract or, or non-objective style of painting, which is also not what I'm going for. So somewhere in between, I guess. So I want to respond to what's happening in the painting and also try to be if not true to the subject then at least um, uh, well, I think I know I think you know what I mean but certainly reference and, and honor the subject
All right, there's some fun things going on in these um, middle ground hills, the foothills. Um, I, again, as in the rest of the painting, I don't want to overdo it, but I want to indicate the light part up on the top and the light part down there, which is a result of the hill being flat on top and steep in front and then flatter um, in front. So these parts that are facing upward more are getting more light. Well, technically they're probably facing the sun more, but for whatever reason they are lighter, certainly. Um, the tops of these are lighter as well. So, you know, there's a little bit of physics involved, or at least of uh, recognizing the physical qualities of, of objects in nature. And the more you study and uh, appreciate what's going on, the more accurately you can paint without having to be exactly, perfectly, you know, a slave. <laughs> yeah. sl you don't have to be a slave to the, to the subject, but you can still be um, respectful towards it. Okay, so it must be a little bit lighter. Let's see how this turns out. It might be a little bit too purple here. Yeah, it's a little too purple. All right, just gonna mix up a light yellow, basically. It's a little bit warmer than that last brush stroke. Got a stray hair there. Oh, come on. Okay, well, I guess it's not coming off, so. tops of those hills lighter. Also, the part down here at the bottom. So really, I'm trying to balance, you know, this extremely interesting part and this pretty interesting part and this really boring part. I, um, it doesn't work for me. I really want this to be the most interesting. So I've got to push that back and I want this to be a nice transition. So, yeah, that, that hair, the stray hair on the brush is bothering me. There we go. Okay, so I'm just trying to model it a little bit more. Just variations in there to make it more interesting. A little bit more purple. Okay, so a few purple shadows in there. That one might be overdone. Let's see. Uh, that's all right. I don't like this um, sharp line right there. So I'm just gonna, I need a different color on there. But I'm basically just gonna knock that down. Make it softer. All right, I like that better. So I'm gonna get out my small brush, see if I can work some magic up front here, with some details, and see if I can't keep that, the mountain. All right, so my small brush, in this case, is a uh, size zero red sable. It's a well-used sable, so it doesn't have a great, a great shape to it anymore, but that's all right. I don't need it to for this. I'm getting just a, um, I've got, oh, what is it? Raw, uh, burnt sienna and raw umber. Just because these little windows are 
are basically black, but they, when seen from a distance through this color of light, they are definitely, um, they have a color to them, a warmth to them. Is that what you drew, Banjo? What? Oh, you sculpted it? Yeah. So, just a couple little... Eyes. Little lines there. I like that these random shapes um, end up looking like something. And the key is just to not overdo it. You just put something down and kind of let the the brush. Let the brush do what it does and then you can change it and the I guess the key the real key is to know when to stop. Just a sec. Let me finish this brush work. Little window there and that's a barn. This is the wrong color but I'm gonna put it there anyway just to help me remember to put it in. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put the proper color into the shadow of that little side building. Just a purple. See what happens when, it, when I use too small a brush. It just... The lines are too sharp. The edges are too sharp. And I just... See how it doesn't... Let's see if I can focus here. It just doesn't quite match. See how, how soft and almost glass-like the surface is compared to this wonderful texture quality there. So I'm going to go back to my other brush for a minute. Get a little bit of a bluer, browner color for that to go over this purple that I already put in. Ah, that's, that's more like it. Now, soften this. That part is in shadow, just the same as that back part. Okay, I'm going to go back to the, the small brush. But actually, okay, I'm going to go for my signature brush here. The brush that I use to sign my name. So literally my signature brush. No, no, no. Fine. And to even get this thing to work, Fine. I've got to, got to thin down the paint. I'm just putting some trunks in, really, really subtly. Um, you can barely see them through the screen. They're just barely there. But I want them to be a little bit more there than that. Mm. Not much, just a little bit. Just so the mind recognize it at, recognizes them as trunks. There's a a roof line here that's in shadow that I want to indicate as a strong shape. But I like that that it's blue. Bluer. So right there. I also want to make this roof part a little more prominent. They're both about the same color, so just do them both at the same same time. Daddy, can you fix it? Yeah, sweetie, just a sec. Alright. 
That's quite a detailed painting for being so small. This is more detailed than I expected it to be. Um, so I'm going to have to live with this a little bit to decide. So after thinking about it just for a minute, I think I'm going to... Oops, a little glob of dried paint there. I'm going to lighten up the background. The so there's this transitional area here that is obviously closer to us than that part. And I think I'll use that to my advantage a little bit to make a transitional area. I'll also lighten up some areas back here. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, I don't like that. Bring that purple back in. I think I just need to simplify back there. And I'm hesitating because I really like it, but it doesn't doesn't work for this painting. So I need to uh, sadly I need to simplify that snow field. Maybe this will do it. Well, it's closer. It's almost there. Let me wash my brush. So I'm going to get one more white. I'm going to go back, just back down to this area where I still have my snow color. Um, hmm. You know, I, I just really love the pattern up there, but again, it just doesn't quite work for the size painting. So I'm just going to have to simplify. That's the only way to do it. I need a nice solid brush stroke in there somewhere. So I'll get a little bit heavier, heavier loaded. Oh yeah, see there we go. Soften it there a little bit. Okay. Well, that still stands out a little bit as being bright white, but I like it better. Let me do one more thing and then I'll call it quits, I think. So there's some details in the barn. First of all, this little, it's almost like a shadow. It's not truly a shadow. But a little golden yellow line right under the edge of the, the roof. Overhang on the barn. And also, I th still think I want to put in the little broken off pieces. And there are some fence lines and things that, I don't know, you know, maybe I'll just do that right now. They're not really a big part of this. At, at this, this size, there's not much. It's not going to do anything for the painting, so you still don't even notice it really with all the texture that's there. But I will do those, those parts um, of the roof that are windblown. I think it's interesting. Just blue and brown. It doesn't really matter what color it is. I just want it to match the, the time of day. Well, that may be all I need. I'll do a little bit darker in one or two spots. Yeah, I want it darker still. It's so much fun to, to paint and solve a problem. Solve many multiple problems <laughs> all at the same time. It's, it takes a lot out of you mentally. I find that it's far easier for me to, to do heavy work on the farm than it is to paint. 
um, on the, uh, I should say physically, <laughs> it's physically exhausting because it's mentally exhausting to paint. Um, it's also invigorating, but let's see. but it is it takes a lot of mental energy to paint and to make all these decisions in a short period of time. But it's so rewarding, and that's what you know causes artists to continue to paint, even though it's emotionally draining. Isn't that funny how something that's emotionally draining is also physically? I want to make this not so bright. I think just, just by breaking it up, some smaller shapes, it might, might just do it. Ah, uh, that about does it. Not quite so bright. Okay, I'm just going to sign it now. I find that I need a very ink-like consistency to sign a painting properly. It's hard to decide where to do it too. When I'm painting this small, it would be very easy to overpower the painting. But I still like doing it in a dark color. signature scribble on there now. It is complete. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. And I hope that you'll go out and uh, try it. Try some new techniques. Techniques for yourself. Don't be afraid to experiment. And have fun with it. No matter what you do. Alright. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.